Hi and welcome to this demo for FRR or free range routing. So FRR is a routing protocol stack for uh, for Linux, which is uh, a fork from the Quagga. So, so, so those of you that you remember uh, Quagga as a routing stack for Linux. So, uh, so FRR has additional enhancements for uh, to Quagga, which has added more more features and more protocols. And in this demo, we will be uh, installing the FRR on our one uh, host machine which we got here. We have a uh, CentOS 7 host. We will be installing the FRR on this host and there is a router uh, called router1 uh, at this IP address and we will be establishing uh, a BGP session to, to this router. Once we establish the BGP session uh, with this router, we should be receiving this prefix which the, the router one is advertising over the BGP and we should have it here in the routing table of our CentOS 7 host. Um, in this demo, uh, we will be uh, doing the basic installation of the, uh, of the FRR. Uh, we do the uh, initial configuration to enable the, the BGP daemon inside and we will access to the uh, to the VTYSH or the CLI command interface of the FRR which uh, most of you will be uh, seeing that it's very familiar kind of user interface and then we do the configuration on the on the CLI to uh, to to configure the BGP session with the router one and we will make sure our BGP is coming up and we receive the this particular prefix from the from the router one Okay, now to start with, let's go to the to the FRR website, frrrouting.org. Uh, this is the website for FRR. Uh, it provides some information about the FRR and also it has a link here for downloading the FRR. So the download takes us uh, to the user guide. Uh, if I click here, uh, we get into the user guide section of the FRR. Uh, let's start, you know, looking at the system architecture of FRR. So. Uh, one of the important features of FRR is that you know it's unlike the other uh, traditional routing software, which are mostly based on one single routing process. You know, similar to uh, to the traditional you know Cisco IOS software or the other uh, similar kind of uh, products, where it's just based on one single process and all the routing uh routing daemons and routing processes they all run as a single process uh within that single uh within that single process unlike that uh frr is based on multiple different uh processes uh, which are running in the same system and we got something called zebra here which is uh, like a broker between all of these uh routing protocols and and the softwares so zebra here it uh gets the the routing table you know the the routes for example the bgpd daemon is creating and they are uh, marking them as a route which needs to be installed in the routing table so these routes from all of these routing processes from the bgp from reap ospf and the others they all will come to the zebra and zebra finally it injects these, those routes into the into the kernel of the machine or even it can do it can inject them into the routing table or forwarding table of a remote data plane so here remote data plane it can be uh, a data plane like a switching like a switch asic so you can you will be able to you know use the frr to control a switching asic like a broadcom you know trident or one of you know or any other uh supported uh switching asics you know using the zebra to uh, to inject those uh those flows those routing uh, information into the into the table of the of this of the different switches um so that's how the FRR works. Uh, so the Zebra is the broker, the routing broker between all of these processes. And uh, for for managing all of these uh, processes, uh, we have something called the VTYSH uh, within the FRR, which is like a CLI kind of interface, which allows us to manage the configuration of each of these processes from one single console. So once we once we do the demo, you will see that you know it's a very similar kind of CLI interface, very standard uh, look and feel to Cisco IOS uh, for doing the configuration of the BGP, REAP, or SPF, or or the uh, or creating the other 
uh, functions like roadmap or the other stuff. Uh, FRR is supported on you know Linux, FreeBSD, NetBSD, OpenBSD, also on Solaris, macOS is all supported. Uh, the support for different module is different on the operating systems. For example, let's say the VRF. Uh, VRF uh, for those of you who are not familiar with VRF, VRF is is a technology to create virtual routing tables inside the systems. So uh, a system can have multiple routing tables, but they are all isolated from each other, and only those. Uh, interfaces and processes who are running on that particular routing table will be able to use and see that those routes. And so VRF is supported in Linux uh, from version 4.8 onwards. Uh, that is supported. And yeah, and the other protocols like uh, MPLS is supported on Linux, supported on OpenBSD, but not others. Policy based routing is only supported on Linux. Uh, BGP supported on all the platforms, all the all of these operating systems, and so on. So these are all the supported uh, available uh, protocols or features within the within the FRR. Uh, for installation of the FRR, uh, if you can just click here on the installation. Um, you know the project uh, it published the packages for Red Hat CentOS Debian, and they are all available on the GitHub release. So if I go to the GitHub release of the FRR. Here we will be able to see the, the ready-made packages uh, for FRR. So for example, this one, uh, this is for CentOS uh, and Enterprise Linux 7, which is the one which we are looking for, and we will be downloading and installing this one. So we just need to download and install this RPM package uh, to our system. And also, you know, in the here in the GitHub, they have, they publish, uh, uh, the packages for all the other operating systems also as well for ubuntu debian you know there are so many of them here so you just need to find your your flavor of the operating system and download and choose the correct correct uh, installer and we will have the uh, the frr running uh also it provides information that how we can uh, build and compile uh, the FRR if you need to do any customization especially if for example if you are if you are planning to do uh, to use MPLS MPLS requires some kernel changes uh, on CentOS for example uh, so probably you will need to do a comp recompiling of the kernel for uh, for supporting of the MPLS for basic setup of uh, of FRR, so once we do the installation, the first step is uh, we need to edit the this file slash etc frr daemons. So daemons, this file it uh, it lists down all the daemons which we have in the FRR. So by default, all of them are disabled. And to start with, once we do the installation, we will enable Zebra and we will enable the BGP daemon because that's the uh, zebra is the main thing you know the broker we have to enable that and the bgp daemon also will enable that as well uh, to once we change the daemon we just need to do a basic re do, do a restart for the frr to make it happen and after that we should be able to uh, get access to the vty sh vty shell of the uh, of the FRR and VTY shell, as I said, you know, it's like a CLI for all of these daemons. You know, once the daemon is enabled, we can use the VTY SH to uh, to do the configuration. Now let's start with uh, uh, downloading this uh, particular package. Uh, we'll copy the location and we will do uh, uh, we will do SSH to our host here, and we will continue the installation from there. All right, so now I got the console. Let me uh, connect to the host, which we have here, this one. So I will connect as root at 192.168.211.151. I got the SSH keys, and I don't need to do any uh, password authentication. So I got root access here. And uh, OK, so I copied that. So let me just do an RPM. I and the address which we copied from the GitHub. So this command will download the FRR 
from from the GitHub and it will install it uh, as a package here on Linux. So it looks like it is downloaded and installed. Let's check that. Uh, we query the RPM and we see if the FRR is installed. Yep, so FRR version 6.0 Enterprise Linux 7 or CentOS has been installed already. We can start the service by issuing the command system CTL uh, restart. So if this uh, stopped also, if this already started, it will restart the service FRR. And it's done. So by default, uh, if I do a VTYSH now, nothing will happen because we don't have the daemon running. So I need to edit the file, the file which we saw, which we got here. You know, if you remember uh, in the basic setup, uh, we have to edit this file the slash etc frr daemons. So let's go here and we say slash etc frr and daemons. So now we are we are within this file, the daemons file. Let's see. Uh, okay, here we go. So we have to enable Zebra and we have to enable BGPD, BGP daemon. We can enable OSPF, OSPF version 6 for IPv6, RIP, uh, ISIS, uh, these are for uh, MPLS, PIM for uh, multicast routing, EIGRP also is supported, and other protocol as well as the static routes. That's also supported here. And I save this file and I will do a restart again of the FRR. Okay, so now if I issue the VTYSH, here we go. It says, hello, this is FRR routing. So I got something similar to, you know, this is the host name and we got the new command prompt. Uh, so if I do a show running config, give me the running configuration of this host right now. And you know, it's just the look and feel that, you know, like Cisco iOS, you know, you got lots of show commands, you have tab to complete the command. And if you put the question mark also, it gives you all the information. I can do show interface, you know, list. It shows me that, you know, the interfaces which we have, we have a loopback interface and we have inter, uh, uh, Ethernet zero interface, the IP address of that interface and so on. Uh, so now let's start doing the uh, the configuration for the BGP as we wanted. But before that, let's try to ping um, the other host which we have, which is this one. Let's make sure they are both on the same layer two network. But will I be able to ping? Yes, I will be able to ping that. Uh, okay. Yeah, and I will put the IP address of that machine. That router one ninety one six eight two one one dot one fifty two. Yeah, I am able to ping that uh, that machine. So we can do the uh, very basic configuration for the for the BGP. We say router BGP and AS number. Let's look at our drawing. AS number is sixty-five thousand. Uh, sixty-five thousand. And here we can just do uh, sorry neighbor. Uh, our neighbor address is 192.168.211.152. Let me make this a little bit smaller so we can also have a look at our drawing. Okay. And the remote AS for that that, that router is also AS number 65000. So it's just an IBGP connection between these two. Uh, let's do a network of our, our current network, which is 192.168. Um, 211.0 slash 24. Can do ends and let's see what has happened. Let's check out our running configuration. As you can see here, the configuration is very similar again to the stand industry standard configurations. And okay, now let's see show IP BGP. Can do a show IP BGP summary. So here it says uh, we got a neighbor here 192.168.211.152. This is the router one uh, with a 65,000, and we have uh, received six messages. We sent six, uh, four messages, and it looks like the session is off for uh, one minute and 26 seconds as of now. And it looks like we have received two prefixes as well. And we can do show IP BGP. Uh, uh, neighbor 
let's say the same neighbor copy and paste we can say received uh, routes uh, soft configuration is not enabled so that's fine show IP BGP uh, okay show IP route of uh, BGP so here as we can see we have received this particular prefix 5.5.55 from our BGP neighbor and that's what we wanted to achieve so we are receiving that particular route from uh, over the BGP from router 1 and we should be able to uh, to ping this uh, particular IP ping 5.5.5 and we can ping that IP so this is the VTYSH I mean the shell access for uh, for FRR and you know again if I do show run you know you will see the, the configuration yeah I think we can do a right mem to save the configuration and here we go you know it says that the configuration is saved into the zebra.conf and the bgpd.conf let's have a look at there so if i exit from here i'm back on the uh, linux shell let's see what's going on inside uh, slash etc frr uh, zebra.conf so zebra.com these are the basic commands for the, the global commands it looks like it's being saved here in the zebra so host name uh, no IP, IP forwarding or IPv6 forwarding. These commands are uh, located here. And if I do for the BGP, I'm expecting to have the BGP configuration to be here. So again, the host name is set inside the BGPD, inside the BGP data maven, uh, and the whole BGP configuration is also located here. If I do route dash n and here is the my uh or the, the host machine routing table uh so this route this particular route as you can see is already installed in the routing table the 5555 and the gateway is the router one so this route actually is installed by the zebra so zebra got this information from the bgpd that hey i got this new route and this route has to get installed in the routing table and zebra by default it installs in my in the host uh, routing table uh, you can enable the other uh, features uh, the other protocols you know it's a complete full-fledged routing software you can do anything with it you can do lots of uh, policy based routing which, which makes it very very flexible for doing all, all kind of customization or uh, mostly actually you can use it you know as a handy uh, BGP or you know OSPF uh, routing daemon too all right uh now this question may come to uh to you that you know why do we need routing on on a host so uh, the answer is that you know you can just create uh it, the frr you can you can use frr to create linux based virtual router that's a very easy uh way of creating virtual routers you know you can have many interfaces you know virtual interfaces connected to connected to your virtual routers uh when you run the the uh, FRR on a on a virtual machine, you can have as many as you want VLAN interfaces, you know, connected to the virtual router for doing and performing different uh, kind of uh, kind of functions. Especially when you need to uh, to do and create uh, virtual networks uh, within the host between between the virtual machines, you know, isolated from uh, from the real networks, you know, that will be really helpful for using the FRR. Also, you can use FRR to add the routing intelligence to the compute host. So, for example, you got uh, if you got servers running uh, KVM or you know other uh, other hypervisors, and you know by default uh, the Linux hosts they use uh, they just do the layer two uh, switching to send traffic to the uh, to the upper uh, to the upper router to the next hub router so the virtual machines normally they they just route the packet out to the default gateway which is normally is outside of the linux host and so in order to for example to provide uh if you got multiple physical interfaces from your compute host to to the to the top of the rack switches and you need to run 
um, you know, kind of routing protocol uh, between the Linux host and the, and, and the switch, you can utilize all of those interfaces, for example, if you are using uh, BGP or if you are using uh, OSPF. So you can use the uh, ECMP features, equal cost multipath features of these routing protocols to very efficiently utilizing all of these links uh, instead of using the, you know, bonding or uh, link aggregation using LACP. Uh, that will be really helpful. Also, if you have, if you run the containers and you have multiple virtual networks, layer three uh, networks within the within your host, within your compute host, by using an, uh, a routing stack like FRR on this on the host, you will be able to advertise all of these subnets which you got to the upper router and you will be able to create a full reachability between your uh, between the container networks within the host and the outside network so you don't need to do any kind of natting which are you know sometimes become like overhead and of course you can create low cost test labs for doing the testing of you know almost anything you know you know using the frr so frr is very handy uh, probably i think most of you yeah, you are. Uh, you might be familiar with Zebra or Quagga. You have tried it before, and the FRR is just a newer version and enhanced of the of the same uh, software, providing the same software but with more, with more additional features like supporting the MPLS and other stuff. Uh, please feel free if you have any question or uh, any requirement for additional. Uh, demonstration please uh, feel free to write in the in the forum or you can contact me directly thank you